Chapter 6 of Moon Bear Bombs! A man from the bomb clearance team held up a poster of a long metal tub filled with fit, um, fist-sized metal balls. Cluster bombs, he said. The man in the van with the pet, pet, um, padded jacket and metal detectors had arrived the day after Pa was killed. One was foreign, a falong. He was a big man with, a yellow, with yellow hair. His white skin was reddened on his face and forearms. He had a huge nose like an overripe tomato. The other men were from Laos, from the city. They had scanned the earth with their metal detectors working slowly up and down the fields. Six bombs had been found in their field alone, and two in the center of the village. They told Ma it was lucky that I hadn't been killed too, but it, but it should have been me. It would have been better if it had been me. I wonder if Ma thought that too. Who would work the fields now that Pa was gone? Where would we live now that there was no man to, to head our household? Bombs, the man said again. Everyone from the village was crowded into the chief's hut. Children sat on the floor and adults stood in a ring around the sides. Even General Ch Chang was there with two of his men in suits. They had arrived in the helicopter spinning dust into the sky. I noticed he hadn't had, or he didn't have the cameraman with him today. Noise said he heard the general wasn't pleased about the bomb. Other villagers might hear about it and not want to leave the mountains. I sat near the back with Ma and my sisters. It was hot and airless in the room. May buried her head into my chest. She hadn't spoken since Pa died. Su Lee grabbed my arm. I could feel her fingers dig into my skin. The man held up another poster of bombs falling from the sky. 300 million of these were dropped from Laos between 1964 and 1973. A, a plane load of bombs every eight minutes, every hour, 24 hours a day. He spoke the figure slowly, then paused and looked around. The room was silent. I glanced at Ma, but she was staring into a space as if her mind was far, far away. The man tapped his finger against the poster. Our country has had the most heavily bombed, is the most heavily bombed country in the history of the world ever. He said this with a mixture of, with a strange mixture of awe and national pride. He leaned forward and lowered his voice. It was the American secret war. He could, how could so many bombs have been kept a secret? I knew grandfather had fought as a boy shoulder in the war, but he never spoken of it. The only sign was the long scar of his leg. Maybe it was a secret war too. The man held up another poster of a bomb hidden beneath gas and weed, grass and weeds. Many bombs exploded when they hit the ground, but many didn't. Millions lie unexploded in our village and field. I stared at the picture. My head felt light and white. A bomb like that had waited for more than 40 years to tear Pa's soul apart. The man's voice became muffled and far away, sounded far away. I got up, pushed past Ma. I need some air. I started walking out of the village. I didn't know where. I wanted to run and run. I had a crazy idea I could get out of the mountains, somehow start over again with grandfather in the forest like it like it used to be. Above the sky had darkened. It glowed with the deep blue moon so soon light. Uh, clouds, bellies swelled in with rain. I could taste the water in the air. The distant ridge of the mountain had merged into a haze of blue. On the mountains, it was raining already. Hey, Tam, I turned. Noi was running to catch up with me. Where are you going? I slumped down to the ground and waited for him. I dug my fingers into the dry earth. There was nothing to run to. I don't know, I said. Noi crouched next to me and picked up a handful of dirt, letting it run through his fingers. I could see him watching me. Rain's coming, he said. I nodded. Our field lay empty. The deep crater left by the bomb had filled in. The irrigation um, ditches lay half dug. It wasn't ready for the rice. I looked at Noi. What will I do? What will I do now that Pa's gone? Noi picked up another handful and let it slide through his fingers. A 
Around us big dark dots of rain began to pit the hot ground, sending little puffs of steam into the air. He held out his palm, palm to catch the rain. What will I do, I said. He got up and brushed the dust off his knees. Come on, let's get back. By the time we reached the village, we were soaked. The clouds had opened up and the rain hammered the tin roofs and fell in sheets of water into the ground. It pulled beneath the houses and cut channels through the soft earth, running in red rivers along tire tracks to the, in the road. The chickens had been flushed out of their roosts in the dry in the dirt hollows and they huddled together on raised patches of dry earth, their feathers fluffed and heads tucked beneath their wings. I followed Noy up the wet stairs into his house. The village had left. Only Noy's family was there with General T Chain and the men from the bomb clearance team. Ma was there too. They turned when I walked through the door. Tomato Noy, Tomato Noy, Nose men, man, put his hand on my shoulder and smiled at me. He spoke words I didn't understand. He says he is sorry about your father, said one of the men from the bomb team. But he is very happy that the general will help your family. I glanced at General Chang. He was sitting at a low stool, sipping the tea. His eyes were fixed on the tomato nose. Tam, the chief walked over to me. Everyone was looking at my way, looking my way. Noise took a step back to let him pass. The chief cleared his throat. Tam, you are now the man of your family now. You must help your mother now that your father is no longer here. Of course, I said. Ma wouldn't look at me. The chief glare, glanced at Ma and then at me. We are not old enough to take on to the land. You are a boy still. I looked at Ma and Su Li and May. What would become of them if I didn't work? I can, I said. I will. I will work hard as I plant our rice. The chief put his hand on my shoulder. General Chang knows of a job in the city. It will pay well and you can send money to your family. It may be the only way you can help keep help your mother keep her house. I glanced at General Chang. He sat impulsive sipping his impassive sipping his tea i lowered my voice i hoped an old chang would not hear above the rain i can dig in the fields i can plant the rice i know i can the chief frowned at me and raised his voice tam i know you share our gratitude for general chang he wishes to help our village he wishes to help you and your family he has been kind enough to find you work on a, fa a farm in the city. I looked around. Tomato noise, Nose was smiling and nodding at me. Ma wouldn't catch my eye. Noi was glaring at me. His face as dark as the monsoon sky. Was he jealous? Did he really want to go to the city? He could have the city for all I cared. I couldn't go. Ma needed me. I needed her. The chief was still looking at me. Any questions, Tam? And that is chapter six. I lied. That was not end of chapter six. <laughs> the rain dumped harder on the roof. The sound dripping, drumming against my skull. My mind was blank, empty. I stood in the center of the room, water dripping from my wet clothes, pulling at my feet. Then fit your things, he said. General Chang will take you with him to the city today. My legs were heavy, as if they were stuck in thick mud. I watched General Chang finish his tea and stood up to leave. How could I work on it? on a farm in the city. I only knew about chickens and pigs and hunting in the mountains. General Chang, I said. He turned to me as if he had seen me for the first time. The sides of his mouth curled downward. The chief shifted from one foot to the other, his face strained. I knew I shouldn't have spoken, to, spoken directly to the general. The rain stopped as suddenly as it started. Water dripped from the gutters. The ground outside hissed with the sound of steaming ri rising from the hot earth. General Chain, I said again. My voice was louder in the sentence. What sort of farm is it? General Chain glanced at the chief and at Ma. He wouldn't look at me. He pulled the long sleeve of his jacket to look at the gold on his watch on his wrist. We must go, he, s he, he said. He turned and left. His footsteps echoed through the hollow room. 
I stared after him. Why didn't he answer? My mind filled with one question. What did you far what do you farm in the city? And for real this time, that was chapter six. <laughs>